Most people who try carnivore feel amazing, then crash. Energy tanks, sleep gets choppy, strength stalls, labs drift, APOB goes up, triglycerides kinda weird, thyroid looks off. You don't need to add daily carbs to fix it. You need the protocol, electrolytes and thiamine, thyroid support, smart fast for APOB, correct protein and one decision point for training. I'll show you the exact doses, foods, labs, and a 7-day reset that gets results. Carnivore works when physiology is supported. Five levers run the show. 1. Electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium. 2. Thiamine, vitamin B1. 3. Thyroid, especially T3 function. 4. Fat type, what you eat drives ApoB. 5. Protein, targets, and training structure. So get these right and you can stay meat forward without fatigue or a wrecked lipid panel. Today, I'll give you the numbers, not platitudes. Non-negotiable baseline. Protein first, 1.6 to about 2.2 grams per kilograms or 0.7 to about 1 gram per 1 pound of body weight. Hit 30 to 50 grams per meal to trigger muscle protein synthesis. If you eat two meals, make them bigger. Creatine, 3 to 5 grams daily. Sleep, 7.5 to about 9 hours. Labs, to pull now and again at week 8. ApoB, triglyceride, HDL, fasting insulin, CMP for sodium and potassium, RBC, magnesium if available, TSH, free T3, free T4, and homocysteine. Low carb increases sodium loss through the kidney. If sodium and potassium are low, heart rate climb, sleep suffers, and training feels heavy. Here's your numbers. Sodium, total about 4 to 5 grams per day from food, plus added salt. Potassium, 3 to 4 grams per day from whole foods, Meat drippings like broth, dairy if tolerated, avocado if you include it. Magnesium, 300 to 400 milligrams at night, glycinate or torate, plus magnesium malate during a day, about 200 milligrams every 4 hours. Thiamine matters more than people think. Glycolysis still runs on carnivore, and B1 is the cofactor. If B1 is low, you feel wired and tired. HR rises and volume work dies. So use correction phase. You can take thiamine 200 to 300 milligrams per day or benfotamine 100 to 200 milligrams per day for about two to four weeks, then 100 milligrams per day therefore after. Pair it with riboflavin about 10 to 25 milligrams and a quality methyl B complex if homocysteine is over nine. Now, low carb can lower T3 and blood without clinical hypothyroidism. What matters is function, energy, temperature, pulse, training output, and sleep. So if, if let's say, TSH is above 2.5 and low free T3 and you feel hypothyroid, fix inputs first. Enough calories, electrolytes, thiamine, selenium 100-200 milligrams per day, Use iodine only if you're truly low. Doesn't, don't overtake it. Recheck at 6 to 8 weeks because a true hyperthyroidism needs proper adjustment. Untreated, LDL and ApoB climb no matter what you eat. So now if ApoB rises on carnivore, change fat first. Palmitic heavy fats, butter cream, beef tallow tend to raise ApoB in many people by slowing LDL receptor clearance. Steric acid, lamb suet from cocoa butter, uh, often neutral, much converse to oilic. And oilic acids found in extra virgin olive oil and lamb fats improves LDL receptor activity. Omega 3s from salmon or sardines lower triglycerides and improve particle quality and endothelial function. So the protocol shift to lamb and organic olive oil, let's say, as primary fats, fish two, three times per week, EPA, DHA, so you can get about two to four grams per day, pull back on butter, cream, heavy tallow, 
recheck ApoB in 8 to 12 weeks. Target is under 80 milligrams per deciliter if you can. Heavy, low rep work usually runs fine strict low carb if electrolytes and B1 are solid. High volume, higher rep training pulls from glycogen. If week 2 or 3 your reps collapse, rest in HR creeps up, sleep degrades and pumps vanish, use target carbs without changing the base diet. Use 20 to 50 grams of fast carbs, 30 to 60 minutes pre-lift, honey, banana or a small bowl of white rice. Add 10 to 20 grams intra for long sessions. Keep the rest of the day meat forward. If performance is good, you don't need to carb at all. Supplement stacks, but they are optional for certain individuals. Creatine 3 to 5 grams daily, magnesium 300 to 400 milligrams at night or during the daytime, thiamine as mentioned for about 2 to 4 weeks, then 100 milligrams therefore after, omega 3, EPA, DHA 2 to 4 grams daily, Niacin or nicotinic acid 500 to 1000 milligrams at night if ApoB is high and you tolerate the flush effect. Monitor liver enzymes, glucose, and uric acid. Taurine 2 to 3 grams per day supports blood pressure, uh, HRV, and sleep. Optional HMB 3 grams per day for older lifters or during cuts to preserve lean mass. So here's your seven day reset plan uh, to stabilize your physiology. Days one to seven, protein 0 0.7 to one gram per pound of body weight. Sodium four to five grams per day. Magnesium minimum 400 milligrams at night. Thiamine, as I mentioned earlier, fish three servings this week. Uh, organic uh, cold press olive oil, two to four tablespoons per day. So remove butter, cream and heavy tail for now. And if you're doing high volume training at 25 to 40 grams fast cars pre-lift only, track waking heart rate, sleep, strength, HRV, and energy, and book your week eight laps today. Carnivore works when you run the physiology. Fix electrolytes and B1, support thyroid, choose fats that keep ApoB in range, use target carbs only if performance demands it, and verify with labs. I'll display the seven day reset and lab check in the comments below. But please don't forget to subscribe and follow and share this video because there's a lot of carnivores out there that they're given up after a specific amount of time frame is because no one has ever mentioned or shared that type of information. Cheers.